In today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to host a highly engaging Facebook Live. Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel. And of course, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Erin, and this channel is all about helping you to be unapologetically yourself and get paid for it. So what I wanted to do for today's How To Tuesday was I actually wanted to walk you through what I teach within my courses about hosting Facebook Lives. Now, Facebook Lives are such an amazing tool that we have available to us, specifically as entrepreneurs, creators, people trying to grow a personal brand, because they just really allow you to have that real-time connection with your audience. It's super authentic, mistakes are awesome, and it's just a really great way for you to get instant feedback and connection with those people who are watching within your audience. So what I wanted to do was walk you through how to actually host a Facebook Live. Now, I'm obviously not gonna be teaching you the kind of technical side of it because it's pretty easy to Google that for yourself. But what I wanted to do was kind of walk you through the steps to really bring your A game to allow you to host Facebook Lives that are super engaging and ultimately will help you to grow your audience and potentially your brand and business. So if you did like this video, I would very much appreciate it if you gave it a big thumbs up. And of course, if you are new around here, please consider subscribing. I would love to have you as a part of the family and I put out new videos every single Tuesday and Saturday. One thing I would just like to preface this video by saying is while I'm particularly talking about Facebook Live here and I'm gonna to refer to it as Facebook Live, the tools that I'm gonna be teaching you really can be used against any type of video or live streaming content, specifically with Facebook Live or Instagram Live, but you could also use this for a webinar or even a YouTube Live if you were willing to go there on YouTube. So I'm gonna say Facebook Live, but I kinda of mean all of them. So the first thing you really need to consider when you are going to be hosting some type of Facebook Live is creating a compelling title for your live. You really wanna understand the way in which people are going to see your Facebook Live within their newsfeed. First of all, there's gonna be no sound. There's just gonna be you kind of probably sitting there in an extremely casual setting. The one thing that is really going to compel people to actually go, hey, this looks interesting, I'm gonna watch it, is the title. Now, of course, I'm not advocating whatsoever that you use clickbaity titles, but mystery, a power-packed punch of what people can expect are really great ways to captivate the audience's interest. So say for example, you were a business coach and you specifically taught people how to get their first clients within their business. You could do a Facebook Live about how to get your first clients, but really create a title that really interests your audience and sparked interest amongst your audience. Maybe it was like struggling to find your first clients. Here to, here's 10 easy steps to do so. Not making any money in your business, a try and true method for finding your first client. Something like that, just really ensuring that you're sparking that interest, making them go, hmm, I wonder what those 10 steps are or that tried and true method is, so that they will begin to watch your live and then be captivated by what's to come. Another really good piece of advice is that you schedule your lives in advance. Now being spontaneous is obviously an amazing part of having a personal brand. And yes, I do advise to get onto Instagram Live or Facebook Live, sometimes just out of the blue, just to chat to your audience. But specifically when you're doing like masterclasses or you really want to teach people something or show up and have your community there to ask you questions, you really wanna be scheduling your lives in advance. Now, my suggestion is that you don't schedule them too far in advance because people generally have quite a short attention span. So maybe schedule it a couple of days in advance and then make sure to send out reminders as well. Now there are a few ways you can go about scheduling. If you're going live in a group, maybe you have a group or you're going live in someone else's group, you can create an event. If you were going from your Facebook page, you can create an event or you know you can always just create a post as well, just a nice post that you image that you create on Canva, and then make sure you are reminding people as well. Bonus points as well if you cross-promote this with other social media strategies. So you could tell your Instagram audience about it, you could talk about it on YouTube, on your blog, or your email newsletter. So really letting everyone who follows you know, hey, what's up, I'm going live, and I'd like you to be there. So my third piece of advice is to prepare. <laughs> you need to write up a full script for your Facebook Live because that would defeat the whole purpose. This is all about authenticity and engagement. 
But if you are going to show up and teach, make sure you are slightly prepared just so you know that you are going to hit all of your points, have the relevant CTAs, which we'll talk about in a second, but just so you know that your audience are going to get the best from you because you're not showing up and going to be scrounging for ideas. Just a rough outline, even just on a piece of paper with some dot points or kind of even just a rough topic of what you talk about or what questions you want to answer. Just make sure you're going in with some type of preparation. And having you know a review of that preparation just before you go on is a really good idea to ensure that you're crystal clear about the outcome that you hope people to achieve from watching that live so that you can go on and absolutely smashing it without feeling nervous that you're going to forget what you're talking about which kind of brings me to the next point point number four which is probably my favorite out of all of them and that's right before you're about to go on or right before you're about to go live do something to manage your state, right? You want to show up to this live bringing your absolute A game. You want to be the youest version of you that there is. You know, the version of you that would be just hanging out with friends or hanging out with family, maybe having a glass of wine or a beer or something like that. I don't know why I always bring alcohol into the examples I use of youest you, but anyway, side note. But you just want to show up as, you know, the most authentic version of you that you possibly can. And if you're feeling a little bit nervous, if you're feeling a little bit tired, if you're feeling a little bit stressed, you're not gonna be able to do that. So before, maybe half an hour before your live, really do something to manage the state that you're in. Whether it's meditate, whether it's go for a walk, whether it's listen to music, whatever makes you feel you, makes you feel happy, makes you feel pumped, do some handstands, get some blood to the head, do some heavy breathing. Whatever makes you just feel amazing, whatever makes you feel confident, playing with your puppy, I don't know. But whatever makes you feel you, make sure to do that before your live because bringing your A game, bringing the most kind of, not necessarily energetic, but just the best version of you that you possibly can is going to ensure that the Facebook live is super engaging for the people who are watching it. Okay, so now we're actually jumping on to the live. We've managed our state, we're all prepared, we've got an amazing title, and now it's actually time to come on and do the live itself. So when you publish, the number one mistake that I see so many people doing is this. All right, ready? I'm gonna go live. Ready? One, two, three. I'm live, okay. All right, hi. Is anyone there? All right, I'm just gonna wait to see if anyone's there. All right, if you're jumping on, let me know. Let me know if you can hear me. All right, we'll get started soon. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right, can anyone, is yes, anyone there? Can you hear me? See, the problem with this is that you're not thinking about the replay. If somebody finds your live after it's gone live in their replay, which by the way is where you get most of your views, you don't want them jumping on and then just sitting there watching you going, all right, anyone there? Can you hear me? No, they want to be hooked immediately and know what they're in for if they actually continue to watch the live. So that first kind of 10 seconds, you really want to be just like if you were creating a YouTube video of some sorts, you really want to be using that with a power packed punch of giving, setting up the expectations for what people are going to get on the live. So something like, all right guys, thank you so much for joining me today, whether you're on the live or you are on the replay. Today, we're going to be talking about the best way to get your first clients for your coaching business. I have so much powerful information in here today. You absolutely want to stick around for all of this because it is going to be such a valuable life. I'm so excited to be here with you live. If you are jumping on with me, and then you can go into the, can you hear me, et cetera, et cetera, if you need to be, where are you from, asking questions sparking engagement and all of that. But those first 10 seconds, your hook, they really, really need to be setting up for what people can expect for the live. Now, when you're actually speaking and you're being yourself, you're prepared, you're talking and delivering value, one thing that's really important is that you want to make sure that you are encouraging engagement. So we all know specifically with Facebook's new algorithm that it favors engagement. It actually favors video and engagement a lot. So you know, you've got a winning hand here, basically. But what you wanna do is make sure that you are asking questions to your audience or whoever is watching you live, and that you're also encouraging that they use those reaction buttons. You know, a really great one is, do you agree with me? If so, tap that heart button or tap that like button. You know, is this new information to you? If it is, tap that wow button. Something that's just really easy for them to repetitively do is going to show Facebook that people are actively engaged with that live, and therefore, Facebook is gonna go, wow, this live must be interesting. I'm gonna push it out to more people so that they spend time on this platform. So really make sure you are encouraging engagement. Now, 
when I teach this, one of the questions is, well, what if there's no one on the live? What if there is, you know, nobody who is um, commenting and things like that? Do it anyway, because then, you know, a lot of people actually, sometimes they're a bit, you know, one can short of a six pack and when they're watching replays they actually think it's live and they start engaging anyway so you want to be targeting those people so it doesn't matter if there's no one on live you can still just say the stuff provided that you're just doing with absolute confidence and if nobody answers your question then just keep going you know it's almost like faking it until you make it just pretend there's heaps of people on and just go for it just ask those questions so that later on when people do watch it then they can continue to engage with your live and Facebook will still be pushing it out to more people so something that I've done extensive research with my audience about is you know what makes a really valuable live for you and one of the key kind of takeaways that I got from that research was ensuring that they knew exactly the kind of value or the actionable steps that they could take away rather than just sitting there for ages listening to someone ramble about a particular topic so what people were demanding was it to be really really clear what they could take away what they can extract from that life and implement in their own life, business, relationship, finances, whatever the life's about. So really making it clear to your audience specifically the actionable steps that they can get out of it. And this will come in your preparation stage. If you know what people are gonna get out of it, then they'll know what you get out of it. If you're kind of just going in with a topic, then it's really hard to make sure that you are nailing those actionable steps and those valuable points. So really make sure the outcome is clear to you and even summarizing when you get, so this is what you should have taken away from this live today. We spoke about this, we spoke about this, and you should be able to do this. But really, really just making sure it's super clear. And even if you have to repeat yourself a couple of times throughout the live about what people can get from the live, do that. Obviously people jump on at different stages as well, but just make it super clear what the outcome is that people are gonna achieve from listening to you on that live. And then my final step, and this is for more so for the people who are in business and you're really trying to utilize Facebook as, Facebook Live, sorry, as a way to grow your audience, as a way to get more sales, make sure your calls to action, your CTAs are super, super clear. You almost don't wanna be jumping on the live without some type of CTA, whether you're in business or not. You know, quite often you might be doing a series of lives because you're trying to sell a course or a coaching program, but it also might just be redirecting people to your Facebook group or your podcast or your YouTube channel or your email list. You know, a really powerful call to action to have on a Facebook Live is directing people to your opt-in, your freebie, your asset, whatever you use to get people to sign up to your list. But just really making sure that you're utilizing the fact that you've delivered all of this value to people and they're in that really immersed state and ready to kind of get more from you. So you can use Facebook Lives to sell things. Angie Lee is a great example of this and she talks about this all the time, how she kind of organically grew her million dollar business, you know, with a lot of Facebook Lives. So it absolutely is an excellent sales tool, but it also can just be used to grow your community as well. Whatever your kind of current objectives are in your life or your business, Business, make sure you know those before jumping on the live so that you can have the relevant CTA attached to that. You know, you don't want to put in all of that work and kind of it for just to be just because. So make sure you have those CTAs there. Now that is it for me and that is all I have on how to host a highly engaging or highly valuable Facebook Live. I really, really hope that you did enjoy it. If you would like to come join me and kind of see how I put these steps into action, then you're more than welcome to either join the May Collective Facebook group if you're not joined already, or on my Erin May Henry page, I do a weekly live show, the hashtag Erin Answers Show, which if you have any questions for, please do ask them down below. But every week I jump on my Facebook page and answer a whole bunch of questions. And we do often are doing all different types of lives in the Make Collective group as well. So thank you so much for joining me here today. I really hope this was valuable to you. Leave me in the comments below if you are going to do some Facebook lives and where I can find you because I would love to stalk some of you. And I will see you in the next